first of all, I'll go back, in fact, to the title. When I'm talking about strawberries, I'm not talking about these annual strawberries. Okay, the best thing you can do to control weeds in the day neutrals, that plastic, oh, fantastic. You don't need to worry about this other stuff. For those of you who are still growing it, like I am aware of growing with uh, you know, matted row, multi-year strawberries, that's the kind of stuff that I've been working on over these years. About the only thing that can shove through that plastic are weeds that we generally don't have large problems with in strawberries. You will get some annuals that come up through the planting holes for sure. Um, but the biggest problem with that in, in the regions that have done this for the most part down in California and more, you know, Florida, North Carolina, places like that, is yellow nuts edge. Yellow nuts edge is a game changer as far as that's concerned, and it can shove through just about any plastic you want to throw at it. So if you've got yellow nuts edge, uh, yeah, I feel your pain. Uh, there's not a lot that you can do on the herbicides I'm going to talk about on that, and even the plastic doesn't work really well. So they, when they lost the methyl bromide, that was really a tough thing for them. Uh, other ones that might be a problem for you in plastic would be something like uh, quack grass that has sharp uh, tip to those rhizomes. It could, it could penetrate plastic as well. But for the most part, even their perennials that we deal with in strawberries sometimes, um, you know, the Canada thistles, things like that, generally are not a big problem in, in plastic culture. So I'm going to be speaking about the other types, the, the perennial types, and the kind of weeds we have under those kind of conditions are these. Uh, in fact, probably the number one weed that we deal with is this guy right over here on the left. What is it? You know it. This is your cue, guys. Yes, common chickweed. Nobody said it. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Tom Pierbold. You get you get an extra beer tonight. Oh, good. I'm just a little harder here in these days. Um, chickweed is a problem, not so much as a com competition kind of thing, but when you're picking these these Juneberry um, types. There's just so much of this material present that it's hard to find it. You can definitely lead to diseases and things like that just because of the extra canopy involved. The other ones that we deal with, most of my trials have been done on station at uh, Mount Vernon. And these are the guys that kind of show up for us. A lot of shepherd's purse, this one over here. A lot of the, you know, I call it lady thumb. We've kind of decided almost everything we've got now is working with Steve Seafelt a bit. Uh, Dr. Steve Seafeld at the station. And what we have primarily is pale smartweed. It's a different kind of smartweed, but for our purposes, I don't try to distinguish between the two. So there are annual versions and they generally are spring uh, germinating. Henbit, we've got a lot of henbit as well. Um, common groundsel is very common for us. Uh, common lamb's quarter is common for us. Quite a lot of annual sow thistle. Uh, it, the annual south thistle tends to show up in the fall, um, as does the pineapple weed tend to show up in the fall. The uh, common lamb's quarter is more of a spring problem. Uh, ground soils all the time. We get it germinating every month of the year. The other ones that we generally have problem with, you can see over here, this is the hedge mustard. Um, and these are some plots we have had, actually. So we do get into the, the, the hedge mustard. It tends to germinate in the fall for us as well. We get a bit of pal amaranth or uh, pigweed, as many of you uh, would call it, and then quite a lot of ryegrass. So these are the weeds that we've had to deal with over the years in, in the trials we've done on the station. What I want to visit with you about today is mostly has to do with with the herbicides that we've tested. And so I want to kind of go over the lists with you. So I'm going to talk about first what's registered in the States, and then, I, and then I've got a shorter list of those that are registered up in, in uh, British Columbia. Um, so you can kind of see what the universe is as far as uh, products are concerned. If you look at new plantings of uh, strawberries, this is the U.S. again. Uh, these are the various products that we can use. And I'm going to be talking about some of them a little bit more detail as we go. Um, but kind of take a look at this list. This is alphabetical, so there's nothing magic about it, but we have quite a few uh, products available to us. Most of these are 
strictly broadleaf or strictly grass products. So in other words, they kill broadleaves or they kill grasses. Some of them have activity on both, but most of them don't. Most of them are one or the other. Uh, if you look at the established plantings, you'll notice, first of all, that most of these products are available still for a dormant season, fall, early winter type of uh, application. So we're talking about um, October timeframe for some of this, even before dormancy sets in completely. Uh, you'll notice that we've added a couple in here from what we had for the new plantings. For the true dormant planting, so things uh, considered from December maybe till uh, onset of growth, maybe in February or so, these are the products that are available. We use quite a few of these. 2,4-D is not widely used for uh, us out west. It is more commonly used in the Midwest of the United States, and so that's where you generally see that. Um, and, and I suppose over in Ontario and places like that as well, those provinces uh, where it gets cold and, and fully dormant kind of things. For the renovation time frame, this would be post-harvest after you've mowed the plants off. You can do some treatments at that time. A lot of the selectivity based on uh, removing the leaf of a uh, strawberry plant during the summertime allows you to use things like Ramoxone and the 2,4-D at that time. Um, that's where we get the selectivity. Some of these other ones, though, are fairly selective in strawberry. If you look in Canada, you'll notice that uh, the list is a little shorter, uh, but for the most part, it's the same products that are available, uh, with one exception, this Trefland. We don't have it available in the States. Um, I'm not sure it, it adds a lot to the, I don't know if anybody uh, up in Canada is using Trefland, maybe not. I would say probably not a lot. Um, it's a typical pre-plant uh, kind of thing that uh, it inhibits root of, uh, of annuals. So we can see some issues with that sometimes with new plantings. Um, the established plantings, kind of the same list. I'll point out that Lontrell is the same name for Stinger. For those who don't know, they're both clopyrrolid is the active ingredient. Uh, in Canada's market is Lontrell in, um, in the States, it's, um, it's Stinger. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same list. So what I want to kind of do is look at these in light of their mode of action. These different chemicals all kind of kill plants in, in the way that they work, right? So each of them has their own mode of action, but many of the products that we're using have the same mode of action. Now, I mean, we know about this, about resistance management and such as that. Uh, so you have to kind of keep this in mind, but I wanted to kind of give you the, the universe of products that are available based on their mode of action. So the first group I wanted to talk about, this is the one that probably is the major mode of action that we use in strawberries, um, at least in Pacific Northwest. So if, you, if you look at these, these are what are called PPO inhibitors, and I'll talk about that in a little bit more. Uh, the Weed Science Society of America, which is a wonderful organization, uh, you should all be members. Yeah, right. Um, group 14 is their resistance group that they've uh, classified these as, PPO inhibitors. So if you've ever used AIM, if you've ever used Chateau, if you ever used Goal, if you've ever used uh, Spartan, um, Spartan is the same as Zeus in raspberry and blueberries for you, uh, uh, raspberry blueberry producers. Zeus and Spartan are equivalent. They're both uh, sulfentrazone. All of these kill uh, plants in the same way. Here's the enzyme. I'll let you sound that out as best you like. Uh, you can see why we abbreviated as PPO, right? Protoporphyrinogen. Yeah, that's my, one of my favorites. Um, this particular enzyme is involved in manufacture of chlorophyll. So when we apply the herbicide, the herbicide binds to this particular enzyme, the PPO enzyme, and knocks it out. It no longer is operational. If it's not operational, it can't make chlorophyll. Now the weed that can't make chlorophyll, that's a problem, right? Because plants have got to have chlorophyll to photosynthesize and do all the things that they do. So consequently, what happens is, is you form this singlet oxygen, right? So basically it's a, it's a radical, and the radical goes and, and, and looks for electrons wherever it can find it, and eventually you get loss of pigments as well as membrane disruption. And the membrane disruption kind of causes holes in the leaves and water soaking and all this stuff. So it's a fairly quick acting product. All of these are quick acting products, particularly in the light. So when light's present, you're gonna see these activities. So when you use these products post-emergence, you're gonna see probably within a day or two, you're gonna see the effects of the product uh, out there. If you've ever used Goal as a cane burner in uh, raspberries, 
two days later, you see a lot of dead primocanes, right? You see them already going down. It's because of this, this effect is what's going on in, in the raspberry plants. So if you think about that, that's what's going on. We've looked at a couple other new products that are also in this same group. Um, Canada decided to go ahead and go with the goal. We used to have goal here in the States, and some of the United States still have it. We opted to go instead with Spartan when we had that Section 18 uh, 15 years or so ago. Um, we're looking also at rely, or excuse me, um, a reflex herbicide, which is a new one. It's an old herbicide, but we may be getting registration here in the next few years. But it's going to be the same kind of action. Thing to remember about these is they're not created equal as far as their level of, of burning down of existing plants. So if you've got foliage present, we do see some activity on that foliage. So if you think about AIM in particular, cane burner, right? We do see some, some really hot post-emergence activity on the weeds that I was just showing. So if the weeds are up, AIM will burn them down. It does not have much soil activity, however. So you burn it off, that's about it. That's all you're gonna get. The, the weeds may grow back if they're still got a lot of root material there. And if you see any injury to uh, the strawberry, they'll also grow back fairly rapidly. So you don't see a big long-term concern with that. Will it burn strawberry? Oh yeah. This is gonna be primarily used uh, in between the rows to control runners or something along those lines. Chateau, uh, you're probably familiar with, uh, you maybe have used it. Um, Chateau also is a pretty healthy burner uh, as far as post-emergence activity. Goal is probably number two, second only to aim in this list as far as its ability to burn back um, weeds. A strawberry is fairly tolerant to gold, however. We don't see the same leaf injury from gold that we see with AIM. Uh, Chateau is somewhere in the middle. Uh, the Spartan is the softest on a strawberry. We just don't typically in our kind of climate, we don't see much injury to leaves uh, with Spartan. Um, both all of these three, Chateau, Gold, and Spartan, do have soil activity. So if you have weed seeds present, there will be some uh, control of that. The other thing they remember about this mode of action, it is primarily broadleaf weeds that are controlled. Very uh, limited amount of grass control for many of these products, okay? The next major mode of action are the ACCase inhibitors. These are the grass herbicides, the herbicides that kill grasses. Group one herbicide, WSSA listing is a group one herbicide. They all have the same mode of action. All of these that are on this list kill weeds the same way. They inhibit, uh, in this case, the enzyme is acetyl-CoA carboxylase, very commonly found in a lot of plants. Uh, it's involved in fatty acid synthesis, so the fatty acids are essentially linked together to form membranes and, and lipids and things like that. So the idea is with grasses, if we spray this product, we knock out the enzyme that forms those lipids and the grass can't make them in any other way. So that grass dies. Broad leaves, however, are not injured to the same extent. They also have the same enzyme, but they've got a secondary enzyme that they can use to form the fatty acids and then form the lipids, right? So they can continue to make those membranes, and that's why we don't kill the broadleaves, but we do kill the grasses. Um, these are the products that we have. Uh, Fusillate is registered in Canada. We don't have that same registration in the States, but we do have uh, POST and we do have SELECT uh, in the US. POST is also available in the US and Canada. Now, for those who've used these products, um, Fusillate and SELECT are much hotter on things like uh, quackgrass, perennial, types of grass. Uh, post is not very good as far as killing uh, those types of perennial grasses. It works really well on the annuals, uh, except for annual bluegrass, but it does a good job of controlling ryegrass and, and some of the other species. You've got foxtails, things like that. Works really well. Volunteer grains, it, it, it knocks it out pretty well. So that's the grass herbicides. They do not kill broadleaves, only grasses. Here's a group that the Treflan, I was talking about the Treflan, it's a group three herbicide. And what it does is it stops um, what is called microtubule assemblies. Now, if you know anything about mitosis, the way the cells divide, what they do is they double their chromosomes and then there's this, uh, this uh, pulling apart of those chromosomes as the cell divides so that you have the same number of chromosomes. You don't want to double up your chromosomes. So it's those microtubules that actually connect to the chromosomes and pull them apart during cell division. 
What happens when we use products that are in this uh, group three um, class of herbicides, those microtubules don't form. If they don't form, you can't get the separation of the chromosomes, you can't separate the chromosomes, so cells don't divide, and you can kind of see where this is going. If you can't divide cells, you can't grow, you can't do everything else. Typically, these are products that have to be in the soil and they're only absorbed by the growing seedling before it actually emerges from the soil. So you have to have the products present before the seeds have germinated. Uh, in the case of Treplan up in Canada, and in the case of Prowl in both locations, this is what we're dealing with. We gotta get those pre present in the soil prior to germination. Uh, Treplan does a, a really good job of stopping root growth. Uh, Prowl H2O is a little shoot and a little bit on roots, so it does a little of both. Treplan is almost exclusively root reductions. So keep that in mind. So when you when you see the damage, it's, it's due to that. These are, for the most part, they control grasses, but they also have some control of some of the broad leaves we were talking about. Um, so this is one of those cases where if you're using these products, you're getting some broad leaf control as well as some grass control. But you're only controlling seedlings. You're not controlling perennials. If it's established perennial, you're not going to get level of control on it. So keep that in mind. The next one, we really only have a couple of products in this group four. Uh, group four is the oxen, synthetic oxens, essentially. Uh, this would include the Stinger Lontrell and 2,4-D. Um, 2,4-D was really the first selective herbicide that was um, ever uh, developed. As, as far as using it in the modern sense of the term, you could use a couple of quarts and, and kill broadleaves and, and grass, for instance, uh, released in the 1950s. Um, the idea here is that these products, the active ingredient acts like the natural plant growth regulator, auxin. Auxin basically tells the cells um, a whole bunch of information. It tells it whether to become a root or become a leaf. So cell differentiation is an important aspect of it. Cell enlargement is a big deal with this. So the, the, the cells should stay really small and so the water balances change. Um, it also is involved in geotropism. So the plant knows which way to grow, roots downward and shoots upward. Uh, when we put too much oxen in there, these plants don't know which way is which. And that's why we see as a consequence, twisting, bending. If you've ever used the product on dandelions in your lawn, the next day you see twisted up leaves and such. It's because the oxen is whacking around in there and the, and the plant really truly doesn't know which way's up. Eventually these plants kind of, um, the, the tissues don't develop normally, vascular tissue doesn't, uh, all the things that move the water and sugar around on the plant don't uh, develop normally, and eventually those plants die out. That's the sense of that. So the oxen, or the synthetic oxens, is the other mode of action we've got a lot of. I think this is the last group I want to mention. The photosynthesis inhibitors, these are a particular type that are group five herbicides. Um, think simazine, think Sinbar, if you've ever used these products. What you're doing on this one is disrupting photosynthesis from occurring. Remember we had the, the one mode of action that knocked out chlorophyll? This is attacking photosynthesis in a different way. If you think of photosynthesis, think of it as a, kind of a, almost an electric current that's going on. It's absorbing solar energy, it's, it's exciting electrons, and those electrons tend to flow uh, through a series of enzymes, and the enzymes grab the energy from that electron, and then they make energy that the plant can use. It's a chemical energy. So they're taking solar energy, making chemical energy out of it that the plant can grow and develop from. So if you think about what's going on here, we're short-circuiting the, uh, the whole process of those electrons moving around in this system by using these products. So in other words, it's unable to pass the energy on this chain, and eventually you get this big, uh, think of it as a short circuit. What you're doing is causing all kinds of problems in there. You knock out carbon uh, dioxide fixation. You can't make the, uh, the, the energy of the ATP and the APH. These are the products that really get the chemical energy going. You form the oxygen radicals again, and the oxygen radicals cause all kinds of problems with membranes and everything else. And eventually, these plants die out as well. So these products, interestingly, photosynthetic herbicides have to be applied to the soil uh, in order to get control of a weed. Now, this seems weird, doesn't it? 
photosynthesis is not happening in the soil, right? It's dark, dark in the soil. The roots, however, have to absorb the product and these products move into xylem. They move in the water bearing elements of the plant, vasco tissue of that plant, and it moves it upward in the plant to the leaves and that's where it does its job. So you have to get it from the soil to the plant, through the roots, and then upward into the leaves. At that point, you start seeing the, uh, the impact. So typically speaking, you see control of weeds that have germinated a few days ago, and then they start to accumulate these herbicides in the leaves of their uh, small seedlings, and then you kill those off. That's, that's the general idea. Um, if a plant is still fairly small, if those seedlings are still fairly small, we can control them post-emergence as well. But for the most part, they're pre-emergence. And if you've got a fairly large seedling, you're not going to kill it if they're already up and growing and you put these products on post-emergence. Uh, once they're past about three inches or so, you're not going to kill them with the products. So you would have to use them with something else that would have post-emergence activity. So that's the group five herbicides. Oh, I had one more. Who knew? Group 15. Uh, you ever use Devernal? Any in the room use Devernal? Devernal's been around for a long time, right? This is a eight pounds per uh, acre kind of rate. So you know it's an older product when you're using it at that kind of level. Uh, the other one that kind of falls into this group 15 is dual magnum. Uh, currently registered in Canada. Should be available for us in the States possibly next year for renovation time or probably by, um, by uh, the time that we're looking at dormant season applications in 2019. Um, these products are in a lot of ways similar to what I was just talking about with the, uh, with the Treflan and the, and the Prowl products. Uh, you've got to get them to the soil. They typically have good soil activity and they're absorbed through, uh, through the seedlings starting to grow through the product. Um, these, however, don't kill it by stopping cell division, right? Microtubules and all that. What this one does is it stops very long chain fatty acid biosynthesis, really the very long chain fatty acid. So these would be the uh, things that are exclusively in membranes. Um, there's a lot of different ones that are there. Um, if it can't make the membranes, it, it kind of does it the same way that those ACCase inhibitors different mode of action, but it, the, the consequence is the same. In this case, however, both broadleaves and grasses have this uh, system. So we do get control of some, um, primarily grasses, but also some broadleaf, but it has to be against seeds, it has to be seeds. We don't see a lot of control of plants that are already up and growing. Okay, how much time do I got left? Seven minutes, six minutes, oh, now it's six. So I hear five, so I hear 10. Sold. Uh, I'm going to go real quick. I want to talk about the I'm going to talk about the established uh, strawberry trials because I think that's the one that people have more questions about rather than the newly planted. I should have time to roll through that. Uh, these are the series of trials we did. I, I haven't done. I got to tell you, I have not done any strawberry research for the last year because uh, Washington Strawberry Commission went kaputs, right? So my uh, funding is is essentially dried up on it. Uh, but these were trials that we did in 14, 15, and 16, looking for new herbicides that we might be able to eventually uh, get registered. So the products that we were looking at, some of these are currently registered in the States anyway, uh, Spartan Chateau, uh, post use Lade Select. Um, this is the things that we use to help establish the fruit or establish the plant. Our treatments that we were evaluating, everything got that, right? at the time of planting, usually is in June or usually in May um, of those three years. But then these are the ones we applied. Um, we applied these products during dormancy of their first year. So we're evaluating different plots of these herbicides, uh, typically applied in different uh, combinations. Um, crop injury weed control is generally what we look for. So we look for reduced growth. We look for how a level of, uh, what's the level of weed control coming out in the in the springtime. Usually, we see if the the crop injury is that the plants don't wake up very very well in the spring. They're kind of slow to emerge, uh, and so that's how we kind of gauge uh, injury. Uh, typically, we'd harvest these plots, and then we'd have an idea about uh, yield and such. So let me set up this. This is strawberry injury, whoops, got too high there. Strawberry injury, this is from one year of this three-year trial. It kind of was the worst year that we had. That year we saw quite a lot of strawberry injury, whereas in the other two years we didn't see a lot of spring injury uh, in March. 
Uh, if you look over here on the left side, it's, it's injury from zero to 50%. So a 50% injury would be half that plant is dead, or it's a half the size of an untreated plant. That gives you a kind of an idea of what we're looking at. So big bars, not good. We want small bars in this case. Um, and I think because this was the worst year, that's why I'm showing it to you. What I've got here is combinations of Allion product. This is a different mode of action, not currently registered, probably won't be registered in strawberries uh, because um, Allion is a long-lived product in the soil. Bayer considers the strawberry an annual strawberry, right? And so they don't want it in a rotational system with, uh, because of crop rotation restrictions and such. But we were looking at it in there. So if we do maintain ourselves in matted row strawberry, potentially we could get a registration down the road sometime with Allion. So this is Allion applied alone as the yellow bar. And then it's Allion plus Chateau, Allion plus Devernal, Allion plus Sinbar, Allion plus Spartan are these various colors. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. Fierce is a product that's like Chateau. It has the same uh, flumy oxes in half of it, but there's another half in there that's more of a grass herbicide. So it's a pre-packaged mix. They have it registered in things like soybeans and some things like that. So we've been evaluating it the last few years. Um, and so we didn't do full uh, mixtures. I didn't mix it with Chateau again, and I didn't mix it with Sinbar, uh, but you can kind of see where we're at. Trevix is another PPO inhibitor. So think Gold, think Spartan, think Chateau. It's another product out there. It's the BASF product that may get some registrations in the future. And those are the combination treatments. And then Trellis. Trellis is the same as Gallery. Uh, we should be getting a registration of that in the States here fairly shortly. Uh, so look for that in Strawberry as well. And then here's the products used alone and in combination. Uh, I think you can kind of see, looking at this, that these big bars, Fierce was really tough on the plants that year. Remember, we applied these typically in January during dormant season. Even by March, we were really slowing down the growth, at least that year. The other two years, not so intense. Is Fierce something we might be able to get a registration for? Yeah, maybe. Um, but frankly, if we're able to use Chateau, we're able to use Spart, we're able to use Goal. I, I don't know that that grass herbicide part of that is really a necessary aspect of it. If you look at Allion, fairly safe, even with these various combinations alone or in combination, we were definitely below 20% injury. Trevix, a little bit higher, particularly when we mix Trevix with Chateau, both those PPO inhibitors, so it's not a big surprise there. Um, I should mention Trevix has very high uh, post-emergence activity. Um, one of the things to consider with Trevix is that it's, it's like AIM, only it's even harder on, on emerged uh, leaves. So if you've got foliage present, Trevix will knock it out. Doesn't have a lot of soil activity. Trellis uh, or gallery, if you prefer, is fairly low level of injury. We got a little bit with the Chateau, but not any different than, say, some of these other ones that we had here. So, but when we mixed it with Devernal and Sinbar, looked really, really good. So, injury level was generally good, as I said. Two out of the three years, we didn't really have problems. Just this one year, we did. Weed control, in this case, big bars is good because we want to control 100% of the weeds. So, the bigger the bar, the better. These are the same combinations, and you can kind of see where we're at here as far as weed control. Allion did a great Great job on the weeds that we had present. The ones that I was talking about at the very beginning. Very good level of weed control. If you look at Fierce, excellent. 90% weed control with just about everything we had mixtures of. Trevix, a little bit less, a little bit less even than the Allion mixtures. Um, it's not really a, a, an antagonism. I think it's just one of those cases where uh, plots changed a little bit. I, so I, I think we we're in pretty good shape with both of them. Um, and the combination seemed to work well. Where we kind of fell off was on the trellis. Uh, at least in these three years, this is two, 15 and 16 out of those, those years. And that's kind of what we were seeing. The weed control just was not quite as good with those combinations. How we do on berry yield, this is the untreated or ham weeded check. And so if you look across here, any of these bars that is higher than this level meant that the herbicide did a better job of, uh, that yield was higher in those herbicide treated plots than in the others. So you can notice here that the fierce combinations 
We did see enough crop injury that it translated into uh, yield loss. Trevix, kind of the same way alone or with these combinations, but with the Sinbar and Spartan, looked pretty good. This is where the trellis kind of shown. As far as yield was concerned, it was in pretty good shape. Uh, so keep that in mind when we come trellis. Allion, I, I wish we could get it, but I'm just not sure we're going to get it. So I'm going to cut to the chase on this. Strawberry injury, that one year fierce uh, kind of is almost the kiss of death, I think. I don't know that we're going to go for forward with fierce. Uh, Trevix and Chateau was a little hot, and so I don't know whether Trevix will necessarily fit with us. Uh, we control fair to excellent the other years. Berry size yield was about the same. Bottom line is a lot of these combinations do a better job of controlling the, the rod spectrum of weeds that we have. So I do like combinations, and most of these combinations were at least as good as hand weeding. And you know how long it takes to hand weed strawberries. So you're better off to kind of use these things. Uh, overall, I think a lot of these, these newer products that aren't registered yet do you have a good future? So I'm going to shut up at this point. If you've got some questions, I'll be glad to answer. Uh, otherwise, is it break time for that? I shouldn't have said that. What are credits? Past credits will be available. Oh what yeah. Do? What first question? You're in here for credits. <laughs> what? Any <Really>? questions? <laughs> You're going to get a credit whether you ask a question or not. How about that? No questions. Thank you for your kind attention. Dr. Miller, will you be available if, if somebody does have a question, they can find you? I will be right here for the next little bit. All right.